Mm-hmm. And we have to say yes. Right. Got it. We're big on We kids. have to consent. <laughs> okay. All right, ladies. I'll see you on the other side of this intro. I can't wait. Here we go. What up, my Toronto. VK on the beat. Uh, check. Uh, I'm in Toronto. Where you want to get the city love? Oh. I'm from Toronto. Where you want to get the city love? Okay. I'm in Toronto. Welcome to episode 1420, 1420 of Toronto Mike, proudly brought to you by Great Lakes Brewery, a fiercely independent craft brewery who believes in supporting communities, good times, and brewing amazing beer. Order online for free local home delivery in the GTA. Palma Pasta. Enjoy the taste of fresh, homemade Italian pasta and entrees from Palma Pasta in Mississauga and Oakville. RecycleMyElectronics.ca Committing to our planet's future means properly recycling our electronics of the past. The Advantaged Investor Podcast from Raymond James, Canada. Valuable perspective for Canadian investors who want to remain knowledgeable, informed, and focused on long-term success. And Ridley Funeral Home, pillars of the community since 1921. Today, returning to Toronto mike is both Ray Don Chong and Mary Jo Eustace. Hello, ladies. Hello. Hello. We're so excited. Hi. Can, can I just ask a question for the international version? Will my name be first and then her name second? You know, I wrestled just with this. Just want to know. I wrestled with this because, Mary Jo, we talk a lot. Yes, correct. And Do you guys talk a lot in the pod? Do no. Oh, yeah. Well, I don't get on that pod too often. Like, my voice is not on your podcast very often, right, MJ? But we talk no. a lot before and after. Wow. Personally. Yeah, a lot of uh, WhatsApp. You guys exchanges. are very intimate. You guys are intimate. We, do you listen we to, are. Do you listen to Mary Jo's podcast, uh, Ray Don Chong? Yes. Yes, I do. I have a really good laugh because I think it's hilarious. She educates me often. Um, I learn a lot about her. And I also learn a lot about women and people. You know, I learned a lot about David Furnish that I didn't know about. And it was exciting. And her recent um in a way it was a gap when she was like this lady she's like what are you doing about dating men and the lady's like i'm a lesbian <laughs> oh yeah that was good it's really exciting. my radar was <laughs> off for that one no but you know why should your radar be on it's like i have a exactly. friend who has a, i have a friend who has, who's a famous actor who has a um a daughter who is now a they them you know, it's hard to kind of get the pronoun, the pronouns right, you know, without uh, making a thing thing. You can't assume just because somebody has a set of boobs and whatever that they're cisgendered, which, you know, I mean, kids are, above, kids above, are teaching uh, us stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, above my pay grade. But anyway, she was hilarious. She was great. Um, she was sexy, smart. Cute. Yeah, totally, yeah. totally. Completely. Please tell the listeners, so Mary, Mary Joe, tell the listeners the name of your podcast so they can subscribe right now. Okay, the name of my podcast is called Senior Bitches, and um, it's on Apple and Spotify, and we were charting all over the world um, last week, which was absolutely amazing. And Mike is a producer. We've got great guests coming up. We're doing another guy who's got worldwide fame and a total stud. We're going to do that. And um, some some great guests. And it's so much fun because we, we uh, I mean, from Dubai to London, to France, to Canada, to California, with this, with this beauty here, we find out so many interesting things about how women are aging around the world. And Mike is so super educated. Like he, at the end of the podcast, he's like, oh, I didn't know that. So it's just been a wild ride. We've been having a blast, right? Isn't it, isn't it sad, you guys, that in 2024, we have to educate people on how to age. Yeah. Well, it's we're not odd. supposed to as women. Remember that we're not supposed to age as women. We're supposed to become invisible. We're not allowed to get stronger and more sexual and more powerful. And we're supposed to we're have supposed like to... a shaved vagina so that it looks like a really weird piece of whatever, a peach. I don't know. Yeah. I get sort of sad about that. And you look at someone's scrotum after age 35. It's long. 
It is like, long, oh, but yeah, you know the what? long sack. But no one ever says, <laughs> you know, you got to tighten that scrotum, dude. Or your balls. And listen, I've I've been with some fifth, late 50, early 60 men. They have really nice balls. So it depends. I've but yeah, never it's seen a pair of balls that I thought were really nice. It always looks like this like undulating earth, like a, a like an odd planet that just can't do you know it constantly moves. Okay, we're getting yeah. really some are a little tighter, some are a little tighter than others, but anyway, not that I'm an expert, but um yeah, but as, as women we're not supposed to age. Shut up. <laughs> as women we're not supposed to age do women that's what i know do women care about the balls like like do you do you do you want big balls that hang low or do you, do you like them like no you know seems to like them like tight and taut it's nice when they're tight like when they're too low but if they're too know. shiny there's something wrong with them like you ha you have to have balls that look healthy you don't want like anyone's mid. junk to look like it could be problematic Oh, you don't want like, uh, you, you want some like natural pubic hair on these balls is what uh, you're saying, right, Ray Donna? She likes pubic hair. I'm not a big fan. Well, I'm but a bit of a like bush. I'm hair. bushy. I'm definitely bushy. And I'll tell you something. One of the reasons is because there's a natural fragrance that comes with hair. And when you don't have hair, it always smells like a product. So for all those oh. people that like it shaved and clean and all that creepiness, you're a little bit pedophilic and you're also creepy. <laughs> Okay, no judgment here. Okay, good There's to big know. Judgment. A little judgment. Um, okay. okay, balls and pussies. We're off to the races. We're three minutes in. Okay, well, this was for a <laughs> nice conversation. Go. Just remember, I'm the boss around here, so I'm going to put us okay. in certain directions. But if you two want to go off on a tangent, I will try to get out of the way because, I mean, I have Mary Jo Eustace and Ray Don Chong, so it would be exciting to be a fly in the wall as you guys chat. But I want to just open... Yeah, we want you. We need you. <laughs> but we love you. And we know that you've had we, an incredible year. You're we're lucky to have you. You almost died. Yeah. Okay, true. well, I, I don't want like I want to uh drill into that. Like I feel like you guys might have questions for me, but just I want to acknowledge the fact this is episode 1420, which means it's like the second 420 episode, which begs the question, oh. do either of you smoke weed? No. Do you smoke weed? Um, no, no, I do. I'm gummy obsessed. So I've hit up oh, every dispensary. That's not smoking weed. Okay. So you No, you, I've you, got a vape. I have a vape, but I don't smoke weed. No. Mary no. Jo's the partaker. She's the little stoner. I don't. I don't do anything. I was raised with it and I stopped smoking weed officially when I was 18. And then because it's my dad's religion, I kind of rebelled and it's not my religion. I mean, I was more of a drinker. And then it's been seven years since I had a drink and I don't do anything now. Okay, congrats on the seven years. That's amazing. How Actually, is uh, your father, Tommy Chong, doing? You know, he's good. He's um, He's got a new documentary coming out, and it's uh, premiering at uh, South by Southwest. It's the premiere opener for South by Southwest. It's the Chichen Chong's last movie that my sister produced with uh, Dave Bouchelle directing. So Robbie Chong and Dave Bouchelle have organized the most beautiful documentary about Chichen Chong. It's fabulous. I mean, that's amazing. I didn't know about this, but this, so I think 2024 will have a lot of Tommy Chong uh, talk and resurgence. I mean, he's, he's 85 and he's got all these like strange businesses with, you know, with his product. So that's kind of cool. And I know that this one company is pushing a lot of the gummies like ad nauseum. So I think he should be doing well. I'm not that underfoot with him. So I appreciate my father and I really love him and I'm grateful that he's my dad in a way. Um, <laughs> he was, he's a better comedian than he is a father. Um, but I do love him. And yeah, I think 2024, it, to me, my dad is so famous. Like he's one guy you can't, if you walk around as me, nobody really recognizes me. It's not a big deal. I mean, That's I get not some true, people, by the way, well, That's not but true. you know, I, it's not like people don't lose their, you know, I'll go to a restaurant or walk or go somewhere with my dad and people just lose it. Like it's that level, it's the next level of fame that I- Can I put up my hand and tell a story? Okay. Am I allowed? Okay, so when I, Ray Dawn is hysterical. She's got an RV and this is her whole life. She's got this RV, is it one bedroom? I don't know what it is, but she's yeah. driven around the country with it. And so it's amazing. It's like, it's her paradise. So what she does is she goes out to the beach and we go along with her in the RV. She makes this delicious food and she sits us outside. She takes care of us. It's like this transportable home. 
And the very first time I did that, it was for her birthday and it was in February. And we went to where we saw the hot red hot chili peppers surfing, that guy, whatever his name was. Anthony, Anthony Peters. Peters. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So well, we don't want to say lunch. the name of we don't want to say the name of the beach because it's a secret we find. It's a secret beach. And a, a okay. lot of people go that happen to be famous because Okay, so I won't say the yeah. name. I okay. forgot okay. it anyway. So okay. we go for this lunch and it's um, right on birthday and she's, you know, right before your 21 day fast and she's making this beautiful lunch and I meet her dad for the first time. Right. And what I noticed about the meeting is her dad was like, right on, right on. I did this right on, right on. I did that right on right now. Like he was wanted her approval and her attention and she could do no wrong. And it was, he was so visibly, viscerally proud of you it was just incredible and just so charming, so unassuming, but like always out of the corner of his eye, his daughter. You know what's interesting? It was really I, beautiful to watch. I'll tell you something that's interesting. I had a near-death experience in Morocco. I was on a movie called Things I Forgot to Remember. And in the coma that I was in, I took, what happened was I took this very strong antibiotic I thought the French Moroccan doctor said, take three pills on an empty stomach three times a day. Actually, what he said is take one pill with food three times a day. So I took six pills with no food and I went into renal failure and went into, I had oh a seizure. God. I'm in alone. I'm in Morocco <clears throat> in a hotel. I'm on a shoot and uh, I have a seizure. Thank God I was in Morocco because I think if I, I was in America, nobody would have touched me. But they put me in a room. They wrapped me up. They got it, the doctor to come back and he was able to put some adrenaline in and I wrote it out. But while I was in the coma, um, my father's voice and I was super near death and I started to ask questions about what happens to humanity, what happens to us when we die. And, um, and one of the big questions I had was, uh, what is God? And it told me it was a feminine principle. And then, and it was all done in my dad's voice. What is God? Wow. And it was Tommy Chong the whole time. It was so weird. And then another thing it, it taught me was where you die, that is your birth day and your birthplace of your next life. Oh, so as soon as you God. die, but you didn't die there, but you didn't die. There. I did it, but I was close. And, um, yeah. Since I was in Morocco and I'm a woman, apparently I kept saying, not here, not here, not here. <laughs> because women have no, I don't know if you've ever been to Morocco, but okay. women are yeah. treated pretty poorly. Um, and yeah. it's, it's sad. And I had been there for almost a month at that point, And I was very fluent on Moroccan um, customs. You know, women do all the work. They do all the animal husbandry. They do all the agriculture. And what do like the men do? Like everywhere else, by the way. And, like everywhere and else. what do the men do? Fuck all. Did, they go to the cafe and talk politics. Oh. And they have convinced the female population of Morocco that this is an actual fucking job. Mm, sounds worldwide. So I'm right? there going. <laughs> and your and dad I, came to you sort of in your when you were crossing over. Well, it kind of made me think, wow, that we had some kind of deep connection. And it was just strange. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you just don't think sense. when you're in a coma that you're, you're your father's okay. boy. So I know it's complicated God. with you and your dad, Ray Dawn, like obviously. And, and, but I'm wondering, are you at a point where you'll attend the, uh, the big uh, premiere of this documentary? Like, will you attend that? I will, co I will come to the LA screening, but I won't go to a, Austin, Texas. I, I won't go to South by Southwest. For one thing, it's his moment, but I'll definitely go to the LA screening because I'm excited to see it. I haven't seen it and we're in I'll it. Come. So, you know, I want to come. Mary Jo, a quick yeah. question note because I'm curious now and then I want to, yeah, Ray Dawn to talk more about me for a few moments if that's okay. But this is important. To Great. Me. When Great. I, when we hook up and we record the excellent podcast, Senior Bitches, hook up. Yes. And you often refer to me as a bitch and I kind of like it when you call me bitch and it's fun, this thing we do. But you always, yeah. we get your USB mic, we set it up. It's so, you sound so amazing. Did you, do you not have the USB microphone? Oh, yeah, right, I got yeah. it right here. I have oh, it right here. Do I, do I sound bad? No, now you sound better. I think it was too far away. Like I was just like, oh, okay. she like oh, she's in a bathroom. Yeah. Okay. You and you know, it's funny. Better. You guys just reminded me. Let me get my, my snowball going. Well, you okay, guys talk. Get, get it, get it. Okay, get it working. Hey. And did you want to ask me a real question or were you just making fun of me on a national podcast? Just curious. 
Not making fun of you. No, I just wondered why we weren't. Uh, you didn't sound as good for this show as you do on your great podcast, Senior Bitches. So, oh, oh, I just had the mic over to the side, so I didn't pull it in front of me. I wish you had reminded me. We've been like on the air for two hours. I wish you had told <laughs> me guys. We just about my audio. Mary Jo, let me tell okay. the uh, listenership about your Toronto mic debut. Because if somebody listening to this is like, I want to hear the A to Z of Mary Jo Eustace's life and times in her career. Like, I want to send them to episode 1145. And we recorded that in November 2022. And then I'm going to read the description I wrote at the time. You ready, MJ? Yeah, I think so. Okay. I think go. you said, you're ready, MJ? And I said, yes. Should I be <laughs> medicated? Just go. Roll okay. it out, bitch. He likes that. When I talk to him like that, right I on, do like it when it. MJ calls yeah. me bitch. I, I don't know what that says about me, but okay. Uh, shut up and read. Shut up and read. Okay, go. Yeah. In this 1,145th episode of Toronto Mike, Mike chats with, so I'm going to say this name now because it's going to come up a bit, Dean McDermott and Mary Jo Eustace about how they fell in love why Dean left the marriage and married Tori Spelling, the tabloid circus that followed, and how they learned to be friends again. And then I talked about how you can subscribe to the new podcast, X's and Uh-Oh's. And we talked for, you know, a good 100 minutes. But reading that description now, uh, what, about 18 months later, it's it sounds like it's from the 1930s or something. Like, it's like, holy smoke, like, did that happen? What say you, MJ, and then what say you, Radon Chong? Uh, what happened there? I like that you said, holy smokes. My Aunt Sue used to say that. She was a nun. She would say, holy smokes. Holy smokes. What happened? Like, what happened? Like, the 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 quick version? Well, yeah, because like we, we, you've been on to talk about the fact that, uh, you know, that project we had with Dean McDermott uh, fell apart fairly quickly. Like, we recorded 11 episodes, and we dropped a couple, and then he tapped out. And we had speculated about why we thought he tapped out, but maybe now is the time to just uh, tell us all maybe the, the the short version of how X's and uh-ohs became senior bitches. Oh my God. Okay. Well, because my friend Ray Dawn's on, she is a truth serum queen. She can do it. <laughs> no, I'll do it. I, I can talk for myself. I'll, 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 I'll tell. Yeah, I did the exes and O's podcast with my ex-husband. And the question was, can you can you reconnect with your ex and have it co copacetic? And we went on this journey and uh, the whole thing blew up. Essentially, it blew up because his wife, I guess she's going to be his ex-wife soon, uh, did not like it. Uh, she was uncomfortable with it. Uh, their dynamics. Uh, by the way, I have nothing to do with it anymore. And it's like the greatest liberation in my life. And so it was important for me to try that journey because it was such a significant event in my life to have my personal life implode so publicly and all the damage and collateral damage, which is my children, my, my livelihood, everything, to actually address it. My intention was to go into it in an authentic way, to examine this, to come to some sort of healing, to set out a template for other people who were going to go through this. So this was my my uh, original reason for doing it. But in actuality, I just put myself right back into the line of fire. So I take full responsibility for entering a situation that wasn't safe. But what I've learned from that has been so extraordinary. And it put me on a trajectory of where I really want to be, which is senior bitches talking about aging and the beauty and the mess of life. And Ray Dawn and I talk about this all the time, about the ugly, the beautiful, the highs, the lows, how you have to embrace it all and go through it and learn your task and your lesson. So I see it as part of my uh, evolution. And quite frankly, to sum it up really quickly and clearly, I am so excited that I have nothing to do with vile individuals. And I will say that to anybody who asks. Um, I think my ex-husband is living in a halfway home rain Allen food stamps and proud of it. And we have complete distance and I can look at it and go, wow, I want nothing to do with that. I've learned what I needed to learn from that situation. We'll probably continue to learn from that situation. Um, also, but, it was uh, an opportunity, but it was an opportunity to deepen with your children. Exactly. It exactly. was a really good because they had some they had some false idea of him and they were able to live it out. Right. And this was like the biggest gift because it's always grass is greener on the other side, especially for my daughter, who was in the process of being adopted by Dean. And then he went and met Tori and they did their movie. Uh, they actually got pregnant with a child 
and then signed off on Lola's adoption. So Lola wanted to explore that situation and see what that relationship was like. But in actuality, and this is the first time I'm saying this anywhere, call People Magazine, Mike, uh, when Lola and I had a disagreement, which you do have with teenagers, thank you, she went to stay with Tori and Dean. But what that was all about is they wanted her to sell stories to the press about yeah. me and sit do, and do interviews and make money. And Lola, to her credit, oh, at second. 17 years Yes. You mean Tori Spelling uses her children for press? Oh, shocker. shocker. Tori Spelling uses children to get press? What? Head blown. Brains blown. Um, so Lola declined and said, I'm not taking money to make money off this. Or I mean, I'm sure it wasn't even that. She was like, what? She So she, she said no. And then shortly after she said no, they tried to throw her out of the house. So there's a whole other story behind that. But the healing at the end of the day, a year later, and this is all true. I can go into a million pieces of detail, but I won't hear. I healed my relationship with my children. And it, that, yeah, that is, that is the, that is the best game going. My daughter's in pre-med. My head, my uh, son lives a mile away from me. He's going to do his LSATs. I talk to him every day. Ray Dawn, I want you to talk about Christmas Eve. So the no, healing have, that's we, come the, from it. It was the greatest gift. Dean in his marital explosion and Tori in her sadness and obvious, you know, complex of needing to have publicity. It blew up, but it made your family closer, completely transparent. All of the mom's a bad person came out and it wasn't true. And if, but it was scary and it was horrible. It was like the worst, best thing to ever happen to you. Yeah. I used to call you from Rome and go, yes. what the fuck? We were holding, we were holding MJ together because let's face it, magic Mike, people in our <laughs> culture, I know I called you magic, Mike, but Toronto Mike, um, People in our culture, particularly in our society, we only celebrate when things are good and people win. We don't really value equally when things go rotten and it's completely horrifying and it's equally as valuable to a process. Yeah. So to be honest, it's like when someone's winning, 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 you know, because of the laws of nature, they're going to have the reverse. And instead of going, you know, instead of pe treating people like they have a disease when they're going through hard times, we need to be equally as impressed. Wow. It's bad. And you're doing pretty damn good. And that I think should be the lesson here. You're yeah. only as good as how shitty things are. And if you get through without losing your balance, you're golden. You're what I call bonafide. Yeah. Let me. Yeah, it was a it was a journey for sure. Let me chime in and say, MJ, just as your friend, okay, as your friend, I am so like happy that you not oh. you repair the relationship with your kids. Because like, as I said to you through this whole process, nothing else is gonna fucking matter here. Like it's like you got these two kids. And your relationship with them is everything. And you can't let these external factors fuck that up. And you repaired it. And it sounds like you build it back better here. Like, it sounds like it's really strong and you're dropping, you know, I'm jealous. I think here. it's better. Yeah. Like, yeah, it is. daughter's it's going to be a doctor. The, the son's going to be a lawyer or whatever. It's like, what the fuck is going on there? I got to get my shit together. But I'm just so happy for that. Like, all the rest is just noise. Your relationship with your kids is everything. Bravo, MJ. Yeah, 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 yeah it was. Too. Here's the award. Yeah, and I had incredible support uh, with RD in particular. And I remember whenever she would say to me, this is bad, I knew it was bad because <laughs> she will never say that. And she'd go, oh God, this is fucked up. But again, you know, really, I was not getting along with my daughter who was 17. Let's look at hundreds of millions of parents around the world. That's not, you know, teenage daughter, single mom, not the great uh, greatest recipe. And we were having issues and then something, you know, it, it happened and then it gets in the press. Like that happens every day. And, you know, what's interesting is the shame of that and the humiliation of that. Once I let go of that, once I let go of the perfect mom's going, oh, you know, my daughter's a cheerleader and straight A's and she, you know, cleans up and everything. Yeah, I'm like, my daughter's not living with me. And once I let go of that as a mom, that was so powerful. And then I gave the space for all of this to heal and all of this mess to um, to resolve. It wasn't easy, but it was like the best thing we ever went through. So 
It is good. And fuck the press. It is good. Like, fuck the press. Like I had that little taste. We talked about it, MJ. Uh, Radon, we haven't talked about it because it happened after our last chat, which I'm going to tell people about in a minute. But that little taste, and again, no, you know, I know it was your son's Instagram that was like reproduced by people, and then it got picked up by whatever Us Weekly, and it, all these places. This unnamed producer uh, betraying Dean's trust and this and that, and I'm thinking, well, at least fucking name that producer, right? I know. Give me some press, some real publicity. Right, Don. What was it like yeah. for you in California, reading the tabloids dragging this unnamed producer? <laughs> I know. I was really sad for you, um, Mike, and I knew that you were probably in shock because it's such vitriol. In fact, right now, to be honest, I, I've i been sort of just watching the Kanye West and his creepy wife and that whole uh, art, that thing he's doing with her. He's just denigrating her and she's not smart enough to realize that it's not good, the setup. And and the the way the press and people are allowing in a way this this weirdness, and I kind of think it's reflective of our culture that the that people will let the worst behavior happen and not step up and not step in, and people will buy it and keep eating it, whether it's a Nazi, whether it's it's a, we're literally watching in real time a woman be abused by a sociopath, and I think. What does that say about our culture, our society? I mean, it's just rotten. Yeah, I literally don't even know a thing about this, Ray Don. So it's like I want you to, while we're talking, to go on your phone and type in Kanye West's wife and see what shows up. It's unreal. Yeah, he like it's drops unreal. her in a garbage bag and takes her place. She has but... strips no of idea. clothing. She comes. He makes her walk. Well, they walk in public, and she's naked, and she's basically wearing a dog collar. It's unreal. Hot. What? Super, uh, super hot, super sexy. <laughs> but for you, but for you, what's what's and you're 100 percent right. And 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 your experience, Mike, of it was like when you get caught up in it. Ray Dawn, yeah. you've had this too with your press and all this stuff. Once I mean, you get in that machine, Oprah calling Oprah the N word. Yeah, your yeah. Oprah incident. I've had the world you're... hate me. I've had the world hate. What me. was the content? Yeah, and you're. Yeah. What's the context? You're unfiltered. The context was that I had in 2014, I did a podcast and I said how I was, I was complimenting Oprah that she was so successful. And I had just seen Django Unchained like four or five times because right. I thought it was a really good movie. Good and day. I was all um, N worded up. And I sat on a bed and said, you know, Oprah's really impressive because back in the day, she wouldn't, have, she would have, she wouldn't have been a house and she sure. would have been a field exactly. yeah, and, in that movie. Um, back in the day. And, um, TMZ took it on a Friday news dump and said Radon Chong calls Oprah an N word. See, that's such a bullshit. You got N. done dirty there because the context is yes. all in that headline. Well, of course I got done dirty, but that's the rule of press, you know, and the and the English invented the shitty press. So I don't know. I'm not as smart as Disraeli, but um I do want to say that this recent recent gossip of how Oprah doesn't pay people or that's the rumor allegedly or that Ter Tyler Perry I kind of think it's important for our culture to survive that the idols get pierced you know that these false narratives get pierced you know the fact that we just put celebrity on a, on a pedestal without saying is their origin story true are these people being authentic and it turns out no I mean even you know, looking at Trump's story, there's nothing authentic about his life. He's a complete, really? you know, it's a complete lie. <laughs> you know, but and this guy? is important, I think. I think it's important to be authentic. Wait, Donald Trump was disingenuous? God. <laughs> I know he's orange, but disingenuous? Oh my God, and how many people has he murdered? I mean, come on. Or but they're trying to do it now. Or whatever, which is really, really good. Back to the State but, of the but, Union, but go ahead, MJ. Yeah, but point being, because you're, I think of Mike as pure as driven as a Canadian snow. <laughs> like I just think of this lovely Canadian. But does that you know, take away his balls? I mean, shouldn't we say? He's no, we we talk all the time about how super hot and sexy he is. That's what we talk he's super at hot and, sexy, and I. But if you say he's yeah. pure as a driven snow, he's boring. No, but I'm just saying so like, and so nice and kind. And so we get into doing this podcast with Dean and we think that, you know, we're going to change the world. And then he gets done dirty. And I mean, he had like a taste of it and he Wait was traumatized. Wait a second. 
here's the thing about the whole Dean thing that I, that I think Mike is, is really something that's reflective of you. This is a ha ha moment. Here's the aha moment. Dean to me, it personifies the neutered powerlessness of the distorted masculine. Oh, I like that. That's good. Who neutered him? Is it Tori Spelling who neutered him? Where did the no? He was he came in neutered. He was neutered because he doesn't. He has he was his mom. His mom neutered him because Dean doesn't know how powerful he is. And the job of a mother is to encourage children, male or female, to to find that power. And how do you disempower a child, especially a male child? You never let them find and discover. Cut off his balls. Fly, that they can fly. Yeah. And kids need to find out that they can find their way home, that they can survive, that they can pass a test. They don't need to be, you know, coddled and 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 given. Yeah, but he's a Gen Xer. I feel like he was. I mean, he's older than I am. Like he was coming home when the lights went on, when uh, when the street lights went on and stuff like that. Like he wasn't, you know bubble wrapped and in in raised like we don't know but obviously because if you think you know whenever somebody dumps you for somebody they (laughs) think is rich right but whenever somebody dumps you for somebody they think has more social standing or is rich that's an immediate sign of disempowerment like if you are a powerful truly powerful person you would never even consider being that shallow are you suggesting that a part of the allure of Tori Spelling to Dean and the reason he left his the only marriage, allure. Her father is of was sorry because he's passed away. Shadow to Ridley funeral home, but Aaron Spelling was a, <laughs> a rich man. Uh yeah, I am actually alluding to that. That I think he thought he had uh, married into money, and little did he know that hit her mom, Candy, is greedy. We well, you know it's also really interesting. Share. We like project a lot of like way more interesting qualities onto these people who are train wrecks than we should even bother. You know, no, some but people you have are grump about it, but you have grump about it. I don't even feel grumpy about it. I feel sad for Dean because Dean is like on food stamps. Uh, quick, a quick interjection to say Good point before the done dirty in the press and the whole thing there that I was traumatized by, as MJ said. I don't think I was traumatized. He was. But- you see, it to me. But were you traumatized because you'd never had anyone speak badly about? No, you? God, no. First of all, no. I'm not an. I'm not an angel. I'm not a saint. Okay, but that was my first taste Ooh. of like the tabloids doing you dirty. And I just said to MJ that I think I experienced 001 percent of what you went through, and I yes. felt some compassion and some empathy for for MJ. I don't think I was not even traumatized by that. I just thought it was unfair that this was said about me because it's not how it went down. But I want to say, this is my interjection is to say that before that, I don't know what this says about me, but I really liked Dean McDermott. Like I thought, I actually thought Dean and I were friends. This is why it really bugged me because we did had private Zooms and we connected and we'd shoot the shit about hockey and we're both Toronto guys. And I just felt like we were buddies. And then I was double crossed and I never heard from him again. And that hurt me like on some like human level. Well, you know, it's crazy. It's your Canadian. This is one thing I like about being a Canadian, because I'm Canadian too, is that we believe people. How do you get a, full, a pool full of Canadians out? You say, you just tell them. In America, <laughs> they're going to tell you to fuck off, or Britain, fuck off. But like, we're like so sweet. Right. So you believed him. And the thing about Dean, I think he's got a couple personalities. I don't think there's only one Dean in there. I think for you to 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 ditch yourself and to not have power, you've got a split. I think he's got a big split or two. Okay, that's enough about him. That's like about paint Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. Yeah, so please. My question for Ray Dawn is, where exactly is the microphone? Because I noticed when you made the change, you um, got more distant. How about this? Okay, there's better. your snowball. Now I can see it. Can you I see can my see snowball? It. Okay, that's better. I can I see your snowball. I can see it. MJ here. Okay. okay. Is that yeah, better? Yeah, okay. that's better. Yes, much better. Let me tell the listenership that uh, Ray Dawn Chong has been on Toronto Mike before. She's already an FOTM. We connected in December 2022. This was episode 1165. And this is the description I wrote at the time. In this 1,165th episode of Toronto Mike, Mike is joined by actress Ray Dawn Chong as they discuss her career from Quest for Fire to Command yeah. and Beyond. We talked about your father, Tommy Chong. 
you told us a story. Let me tell you this, Ray Don Chong. And I have to say all three names. MJ, what do you call her? RD? No, I'm I call Ray her Don RD. Chong. By the way, I made Bill Maher's show today. This yeah, week. I'm going to play it. I'm going to play it. I have it. I have it. I yeah, have yeah, it. yeah, yeah. I yeah. call her RD. Hey, you. You know, gonna, whatever. Okay, so Ray Chong, I like all three names. But Ray Don Chong told a story about Mick Jagger when she came on Toronto Mike that made the best of. We have every 250 episodes, we have best ofs. And Al Grego put that revelation in the best of episode as a mind blow. <laughs> like, that was quite the drop, like how young you were, how young you looked, and what you did with Mick Jagger. That was quite a yeah. drop. So. <laughs> and it impacted my career. I have to give him thank you because I was able to do his solo album video, Running Out of Luck, and then that got that helped me get Commando. So, And the rest is history. But it's kind of like tough to hear that, right? Because you were, what were you, 14? 15. 15, but you, you mm -hmm. said you looked 12 or something, but you were 15. Probably. I look like a little Moroccan boy, a 12-year-old Moroccan boy, which means basically <laughs> that they're all, all the guys that I was fooling around with are gay. Oh, <laughs> that how it works? I got to take oh, Yeah, because I had no shape. I was just this little thin thing and I look like a little Moroccan boy. Just so oh. you know. So if we do the if we do the math, does that mean that Mick Jagger's gay? Mm -hmm. We don't no, know. I, well, mm -hmm. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Not, not that, that listen, my son's the gayest of the gay of the gay. There's nothing wrong with it. I support it. But interesting. Mary Joe, Mary Joe you're Here. so cute. She's Let so proud of her son of being gay. gay. I'm, so, you know, I'm so proud. I actually I love have uh, four kids, but two are like prepubescent. So I have no idea what's going to happen there. But the first two turned out straight. And I am mildly disappointed that I have like a couple. You of should be. You should be. Having a gay son, first of all, his hygiene is very glamorous. Excellent. So glamorous. Well, on Christmas Eve, we went to his Christmas party and there were drag queens and we sang yeah, um, Coming Down the Chimney with Your Tits Out. Remember that song? Oh, and I got it's up and It's a danced. really good, it's a very mesmerizing song. Is this How much fun did we have? Uh, I want to hear the story from Ray Dawn because I think earlier, MJ, you said you wanted Ray Dawn to talk, talk about uh, Christmas Eve. So Ray Dawn Chong, talk about that party and then I'm going to play Bill Maher from this week. Okay, so here's the thing. Uh, we went to Jack's apartment and he had friends who happened to be um, professional dancers and performers. And a couple of them were in deep drag. And what I learned is, and this is something I didn't know, there is a plethora of Christmas songs sung, not mostly by women rappers that are pretty X-rated and they're all yeah. about Santa. And one of them is about coming down the <laughs> chimney with down my... the chimney with your tits out, Santa Do baby. You like we it, sing it all. Santa I baby, love it. it's a really sexy like song Santa... actually. Yeah, I love and it. And you wouldn't know it. that if you're at a normal Christmas party. No, so that and we was, had a couple of drag story. queens there, all dressed up. One was dressed up as Barbie. But we had dancers one was in... too. One was in a leather skirt with a beard. And then we- you know, And his what, package what I, was showing, remember? Yeah, yeah then Ray Dawn showing. pointed out his, his balls were showing. That was that was one highlight of the I mean, the they party, were but, naked, but it was pretty funny. Yeah, was like, he was super cute. I talked Ooh, to that, yeah. that girl guy at the I end. I think they sure, were but, all really beautiful, MJ. Beautiful. There, was remember not, there wasn't a dog. In the, in the group. No dogs. And remember that one of Jack's friends who was a woman did the splits during the tits up. Tits oh, yeah. Down, she uh, was like what thing. they call, um, they call him, and uh, I guess I shouldn't say this anymore. I bet it's not politically. Spinner. Fair, but Spinner. No, that, that she was like a fag hag, but you can't say that anymore because yeah. people get offended. So I, I say, I say that knowing that it's not right, but she was their little fat chubby friend who could dance better than all of them. She, she did awesome. the splits, right? She was awesome. But what was also really interesting. And twerk. She had so much like, I junk know. in the back. I was jealous. I know. I, she I she that did that. Um, but what was shook. really cool, what was really cool at that party is a lot of the kids, there was some, and I call them kids if they're under 30. Um, a lot of them were displaced because their parents would not have them home for Christmas. One of them, remember that great guy we talked to, his his mom really didn't accept him. And well, because so he he's from Massachusetts, go. where they, they call them mass holes for a reason. But yeah. uh, Massachusetts is uh, a place, you know, where they talk like this and everybody's like, you know, really masculine. And uh, But actually, you know, the num the math ain't math and there's a lot of gay kids in Massachusetts. Well, the Catholic my heart goes out to you. Pretty, my Catholic heart church is pretty you. prominent there. But it was yeah. such a fabulous New Year's. We had, uh, uh, Christmas Eve, we had such a great time. It was so yeah. fun. How often do okay. you two see each other? Not as much as I'd like, but because now 
Mary Jo lives away and she does yoga. She doesn't come to bar class. We used to take bar class and see each other almost every day. Yeah, which was good. But we've got big plans coming up. And she doesn't do Aikido. I do Aikido. I'm obsessed with Aikido. And we play tennis. We do our tennis. We do our tennis. That's true. And Mary Jo, we have to play because I have to practice. I'm playing singles in my next match. Okay, I'll I'll get you going. I need to practice. Okay, quick okay, question. Okay. So, like, if Ray Don Chong uh, left the Zoom and started walking to where MJ is right now, how long until Ray Don Chong reaches Mary Jo Eustis? Oh, well, if I Half rode my hour? bike, it would take about fifteen minutes. So no, I could take my right like twenty minutes. Twenty minutes. Yeah, apart. we're super close. And yeah. the other thing too, this is just we're just giving you tidbits. Is this good? Do you want tidbits? I want everybody to play with this there. So what's really cool is during the award season, I'm Ray Dawn's plus one bitch, which I love. So I get to go to the most amazing parties. We go to all the screenings. Like we get so excited about the appetizers after the film. And I well, want to say Well, it's not this. just screenings. They're not just screenings. They're private screenings for private Academy screenings. members with all the filmmakers in attendance. Yeah, so, so we saw I, Salt Burn with everybody there, like all the Jacob actors we've seen. Jacob Elordi, all the gorgeous Barry, boys. I don't yes. know how to pronounce his last name. Kogan, um, Kogan. Yeah, he was adorable. I was talking to him and I went up to him. I'm such an idiot. I didn't. He's been nominated for an Oscar, but he was so good in the film. So I go over to him. He's itsy bitsy. And I said, you know what? You're going to become really well known from this film. And he was so sweet to me. He was like, oh, Mary Jo, that's so sweet of you. And then this woman walks up to him, your friend, and says, what was it like to fuck a grave? And he's like, what? <laughs> you know, and that because there's the scene in the film. By the way, but that was, was improv. So charming. That okay. was improv? Yeah, that was an improv. Oh. I've seen, I seen this movie. So Sulper and I watched it. I quite liked it. Very much liked I it. That scene it. reminded me of American Pie. Yeah. Did that yeah. happen in America? But how pie? about how I, I think Saltburn's very erotic. I liked it a lot. We loved it, and that female yeah. director was there, and that Jacob Elrod is Elordi. Jacob is the most oh. handsome man I've ever seen. Have you seen, seen Priscilla? Yeah. Yes. Oof. Uh, he's he's Elvis in Priscilla. As you yeah, know. we yeah. didn't really like it. It felt like a painful. Oh, I, good. I felt like we were being snuffed in a sweater. It felt like somebody was suffocating yeah. us. Remember, we just felt so suffocated by it, Priscilla. And there was no food after, so we were pissed. So we left because we love our snacks after. It's the like movie. if we're going to come like... see your movie, fucking. <laughs> I, was, I was disappointed, it was apps. Priscilla, but I really like Saltburn. But I saw a movie the other day. I'm curious if you two have seen it. You probably have. That I was blown away by oh, past, past lives. Yes. Oh, I want to see I it. loved it. I haven't I seen it yet. It, it was beautiful. It's I loved beautiful. it. Like that and, actor, yeah. I have to say, I have to give a shout out to a film I'm in that I love called The Mistress. And that actor stars in The Mistress and he's amazing. John Which Magara, actor? He's the white guy, the guy Jen. Oh, John the Magara, boyfriend? The husband. The husband. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. I think yeah. he's the yeah, husband. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Arthur. So John stars in The Mistress and it's a really good movie. And he star it's a horror movie and he's fantastic. And I play his wife's mother. Okay, so this is very good lives. in that too. You have to see it, RDC. No spoilers in this, except to say that okay. MJ, gorgeous movie, beautiful movie, thought provoking. Yeah. It, it sparked so many conversations uh, I had with my wife afterwards about just the whole the whole thing was so well written and so well acted. And I learned a little Korean, I think. So it was just perfect. Is your wife? I Korean? loved it. No, is your wife? No, she's. Uh, no, she's of Filipino descent, but I learned uh, Korean from this movie because they're Korean in the in the film. Mm. Oh, that's good, Mike. So Which are you part? trilingual now? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I'll try anything. MJ, you. you know that. Okay. <laughs> I know. You'll spill it. You'll spill it. Bill Maher. Okay, we're going to jump around. I like it when we jump around. Okay. Uh, shout out to House of Pain. But I'm going to play a bit from Bill Maher's show this week. MJ, you know, you know what I'm going to play? This? What? Yes. And she was right about this. Yes. She sent it to me. And I said, once you get under uh, uh, the collective consciousness and she's getting all this energy coming away from okay, that. Well, let me play it. And then we'll discuss this energy. I want to hear if Ray Dawn is okay. experiencing some energy boosting here, but here, let's play this clip from Bill Maher. What's trending on Twitter? D Dementia Dawn, because, <laughs> because, <laughs> because, <laughs> Trump was talking about Nancy Pelosi during uh, January 6th, but he kept calling her Nikki Haley. Nikki Haley did this. <laughs> he also referred to the uh, president of North Korea as Ray Dawn Chong. I, I thought that was... 
For the win. For the win. <laughs> How did you feel when you heard that uh, your name was dropped in the uh, the Bill Maher? Uh, I thought it was a really good punchline. I think the joke is excellent. And I think if you've got a three gong name, why not get some uh, heat from it? And I have a, a little bit of a soft spot for Mr. Bill. I've known him for a long, long, long time. No, I didn't go to bed with him, but I have known him for a long time and have a lot of friends who have dated him. And I love him. I used to go on his, a couple of his shows and I just, you know, I, I wish one day that I would get a hit TV series so I could go and uh, smack him around a bit on his new show or on the show he's got now. I love him. I'm I like, black. I like him too. Uh, I, do I, too. I also I did do not too. sleep with Bill Maher. I just want to throw that out there. Uh, but a lot of people did don't I. like him. I have a lot of female friends who don't like him. I actually once saved him at a car park at a valet. One of my crazy um, but very smart feminist girlfriends attacked him. And I had to kind of step between them because <laughs> she was ready to punch him out because she thinks he's uh, he is a he's misogynist. A, no he's offense. a little bit. Yeah, yeah he yeah. is. Yeah. yeah, there's a few things that really. But he was one of the stances. comedians that but he was one of the comedians that took my side during the Oprah debacle. Mm. And so like he and Chelsea Handler were really supportive, I thought. Do you know he got and, into the same trouble two years ago for exactly what you said? I can't remember who he said it about, but he had to come out and apologize. He said, I comparable. didn't apologize and I won't apologize. He and did. I actually, no, no, no. I did not he, apologize. I just I want to go on record. did not. I did not well, apologize. Ray Dawn has licensed. Like I, Ray Dawn Chong has licensed to use that word that Bill Maher does not have license to use. Well, you'll, although if you go to, if you speak to some serious African Americans, they would say I don't because, you know, when you look at somebody who's mixy, immediately they say your mother was raped because it's a it's a very deep uh ancestral wound uh that harkens back to 400 years of of repress uh, oppression and slavery and, and torture and misery so there are there's a big swath of the community that says mm, nope you have to be pitch black to be able to use that word but it's how you identify or, or dave Chappelle. <laughs> Or Dave Chappelle. Gracious. I, love, I uh, love Dave Chappelle. Dave Chappelle. Or Cat right. Williams, who is I'm oh. becoming more in love with Cat Williams. Thank okay, you. So lots of ground to cover, but there are many a Trumper who has used that term uh to for the former president of the United States, uh Barack Obama, whose mom is very, very white. Well, you he's know, that in a different context. Trump still though. thinks Barack Obama that he's running against him. Yeah, he thinks he's running against Obama. And you know what anyway, I love about that? It's just that tr Obama is seared into his brain. And what's so amazing is Obama. What brain? Just, what yeah, brain? Exactly. Seared into what brain? into whatever is left of that mush pile. I mean, when you see the list of drugs that they were doing in the White House, have you heard about that story? Can I quote this to you? Okay, so this is from a quote, uh, a tweet, sorry. I fo even though it's not called that, that's what I call it. But Ray Don Chong on Twitter I took a note here. White House pharmacists reportedly distributed uppers and downers like candy to Trump administration officials during his time in office. Is that what you're referring to? Yes. Doesn't that and make heroin? sense? Dude, it's not just that. It's fentanyl. It's heroin. It's diazepam. It's profigil, which is a, a cognitive medicine. But it's not just the fact that these were the drugs that were swilling around the hallway of the Oval. It's how much... It's page after page after page. Is this just page. for him or is this for all just, the staff? Well, it doesn't say who it's for, but you can tell the cognitive medicine, Profigil, there's a lot of it. Yeah. Also fentanyl. Well, he, he there's been rumors about Adderall. him. He's got frontal, frontal load, load um, dementia. Like he's like completely his brain. I well, can't Profigil even imagine. also apparently creates lesions on your hands, sores, because people oh, this are is the whole thing it. with his hands bleeding and everything like that. But all I can say is if, if Biden had this kind of, you know, list of, of meds coming in and out of the hallways, it's unbelievable. I mean, it's a kind of like, it's like, it's a bacchanalia of pills and really strong drugs. We're talking morphine, fentanyl. And as somebody who grew up but, with drugs, that's a lot of drugs. But there's no equivalency. I mean, like the, you, the Republicans and their messaging and what they do, they don't even have Under policies anymore. Biden. Poor oh Hunter God. Biden, he just happens oh. to be an addict. And by the way, he was in the car when his sister and his mother died. And, and by his the way, he wasn't president. He wasn't president. And, oh, and by the way, he's, just he's never been person. in office. No, he's and not I'm telling you, yeah. 
No, but the hatred for Hunter Biden. He's not, Guzman, Ivan he's not Ivanka stuff. and no, Jared. Uh, he didn't sit there no. and rape America. Well, how long did Trump date his daughter for? Like, I'd oh, like to nail God, that down. Like, it's what, so what, bad. When, what year? Pre his marriage? Is okay. he still seeing her? Anyway. There's another what about the fact that Trump is like besties with, with uh, Epstein for Epstein. Years, decades. Yeah. But decades. He denies that now. He denies well, I think at now. this point, those who support Trump don't really seem to give a fuck about his character or what he's done. And at this point, it seems to be that a Republican in the White House, somehow this will, I don't know, ban abortion. I think Trump should go to jail and he should be surrounded by Trumpers. Yeah. I would like him. He could very, listen, he, listen, he could very well go to jail, but I, here's something, and I read this guy and I want to- He has to pay it's e. called Carol, by the way. Yeah, so his name is Jeff Tiedrich, I believe, and I find him yes. on Substack. He, he calls best. him fucking, yeah, I read him all the time, but here's the actual deal about the $83.3 million that he's going to owe. The, the appeals, the bails, the bonds, the shit that you have to put up for all of this, he is hemorrhaging money. He is lo losing so much money throughout this. So he's, you know, going, he's gone to his base already to get the $2 donations, but actually the amount of money and the $367 million is prohibitive for him. Like he can't just walk away from this shit. You know, he has to pay. He's responsible to the court. So it's just- and uh, you every know, you know, day he doesn't pay, there's interest. Can there's compound interest. interest. On on $83 million. Anyway, just, Eugene Carroll was a distinguished writer prior decades to Trump. She I've deserves been reading everything. her for years. Seeing her with her lawyer, her lawyer is a fucking pit bull. And they're like, if he Bobby fucks up Kaplan, again, we're going love her. her. We're going after, we're going after him again. And to to this was so interesting to see Eugene Carroll interviewed by Rachel Maddow and all these people because she didn't sleep. Of so course, good. you wouldn't a week before you go into the courtroom. And when she sat down in front, she thought she would pass out. She actually lost her ability to speech for a couple of days. But when she sat down in the courtroom and looked over at him, she was like, Oh my God, the emperor with no clothes. He's just orange. He's nothing. No, he, this man is nothing. He's so nothing. as a woman, as a woman, Trump, I mean, it'll be interesting to see who dies first. Biden Here, but here's I the thing know. that I, I got a little nervous about it. And the press are doing it. The mainstream press are doing it. They keep showing photographs of Robbie Kaplan. They keep talking about her. And when you find out that Mitt Romney has to pay $5,000 a day to protect his family. Security. Yeah. From just voting to impeach the yeah. loser. Yeah. Imagine yeah. what Robbie Kaplan has to pay because now her face is everywhere. And I kind of think they need to stop that because there are losers out there with AR-15. But they can't stop it. They can't stop it. It's they, this, no, this but train has left the station. Them. I know. No, the I, trains left the station. He uh, created this culture of divert, you know, div divisiveness of hatred. He says the unspeakable. We no, can, I we just can want the press this. to stop taking photos. I mean, showing Robbie's face. But they have to. to. She goes on every show. Bonnie She's Willis promoting. having to do decoy. Yeah. I mean, you yeah. guys, this guy. I mean, I think we're not going to be thoroughly recovered from him. It's going to take at least twenty five years. It's going to take generations. Yeah. Generations from this man. Yeah. Anyway, Trump and Dean, too much airtime. Next. <laughs> <laughs> Any no. I, I, don't think, I don't think Dean is as bad, although he. <laughs> you know, Dean, Dean, who I quite, again, I, I quite liked until he double crossed me. Okay. He seemed to be a charming guy. Now we just feel sorry for him. <laughs> I don't want to. Too much airtime. You know, Drake. Too much airtime. But okay. Go next. Last question on Dean is this. Very last question is <sighs> when you learned that there was a separation between uh, Tori Spelling and Dean McDermott. Did you, Mary Jo Eustace, experience any Schuldenfreude? Yeah. You can't we answer, did. Mary Jo. You're... <laughs> we did. Shut the fuck up, both of you. Uh, what, I experienced, what I experienced was I've known about this for years. He's been telling me for years about this. He lives in, on top of the garage, the animal shit all over the house. That's why they had mold, because the pig <laughs> had diarrhea in the bedroom, whatever. Like, I've known about this for years and years and years. I could not care less. That's I true. really couldn't. I just think the whole thing is the trashiest most ridiculous thing I've ever seen on a benign level, but the real level of like the collateral damage of what it's done and impacted my life is a very different thing. I could not, I couldn't care less. No, cause you I really have really the relationship didn't. with your two kids. So why would you care about this noise over there? I no, do not. And you kind it of could see it coming, but it's the writing on the wall, you know, the, the, and I've heard about the writing on the wall for about 
six or seven years from, but, you know, did you so I've, I've heard about it. MJ, you, you were yeah. you a child, you had Jack together as a married couple, and then you were a I believe he's what? the father. Don't quote me. I believe he's well, the father. That's none of my business, I suppose. But you have a child, you're, a, you're in the process of adopting Lola, and then he leaves you for for uh tori spelling i would think i that remember you, yeah i'm just <laughs> recapping it for the audience but when you learn that you know he like you according to you allegedly he's living above this garage it was shit. no 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 he's not even there anymore he's out he's no, not anymore but when you learned about that years he's ago got a tent at the fort right. in the yeah. fort you know, and you know, it's it's a, under the Ray five. Dawn drove by his abode this morning at the corner. <laughs> he's he's out you know, in front there, of the for the go, of go on, go I. But okay, when you learn about yes. oh, things are shitty between pun intended, when things are shitty between Tori and Dean, is there any part of you that's like, okay, there's your comeuppance, like good on good for this is like feeling good about that happening because he left you for her is that's that's the schadenfreude i'm not german i just speak a little german i can say no, i know i'm so impressed because you've got your korean you've your phil i mean you've spoken a lot of languages <laughs> this morning. Um, yeah I yeah know really, how to say the word schadenfreude anti-church Schoden social club um yeah that's yeah, like yeah. yeah honestly and truthfully i could not be more bored by this topic. Yeah, I move on then. didn't care. I just thought the whole thing was skeezy. And I was like, I'm not surprised because I've been hearing skeezy about it. Skeezy is a so good long. word. Skeezy and my skeezy. only, my only, honestly, at this point is, will he be a good dad to my son? Will he cover the student loan? Well, no, he's stuck it with me and he's not a good dad to Jack. No. So that's all I care about really at the no. end of the day. And so I don't, whatever goes on there, it's noise, it's preferred. But we do send uh, I, him, we do send both of them, you know, um, we do hope that they get organized. Yeah, organized. He's, got, he's got a lot of kids. Word. Like he's got Jack with you, but he's got five others, right? We call, I call Apparently. them honey boo boo. <laughs> oh, so we do wish again, we, especially if he's, he's, uh, I don't know, in recovery, he might've had some addiction issues. Like I, this is no laughing matter. This is all very serious. So no, I hope he gets that yeah. handle on the addiction issues on that note. I heard you say Ray Don Chong that you have been what, nine years uh, without alcohol. Actually it's been eight, but I said seven. It's actually been oh. eight. Well, now I've made it nine, so you're, you're okay. So no, it's only been it's only been eight. I was reading my um, first month sobriety diary yesterday, and I saw the date, and it was like so cool. And the first month that I was sober, I isolated in Whistler. I took myself out of Los Angeles, away from all of my triggers and friends, and right. who were super drinkers with me. And I put myself alone in a cabin in Whistler and I, I did a lot of exercise. I had like a routine. I had what I call a sobriety. I guess in a way it's the DTs too, because you have to go through that, that uh, the struggle of um, addiction. So I went through it alone, but I also used a site. There's a site that was really active called um, Hello Sunday Morning. And it's a, uh, oh, yeah. it's a, it's a website or was more of a Facebook -y kind of website. It's not like that anymore, but that's from Sydney, Australia, which is, you know, the land of a lot of drinking. And these young people um, created this world that you could check into every day and blog, read blogs. They had like really cute things. Like it's, I don't, I know this may sound strange, but when you're giving up a behavior, it's nice to get stars and to win, you know, online to have someone say, you get yeah, you get a badge for day three. So it was really nice. And then there was a community. So I was able to sort of talk with other people who were white, white knuckling it because I didn't go to AA. I have a little trouble with the whole uh, church thing of AA. I love the fact that people have it for their for their sobriety, but it bugs me on a lot of levels. I have no problem talking about how badly I was addicted to booze, but Can I, I ask don't you really a question? like AA. Can I ask you a quick mm -hmm. question? Because uh, mm -hmm. we talked about this before. So when you actually decided to do it, like, were you drinking every day? Was it interfering with your life? Like, were you binging? Like, how did it manifest for you? I was drinking every day and I was drinking a lot every day and it was winning. That's all I can say. It was winning. Like it, right. I bullshitted myself by saying, you know, wine with dinner, a couple of drinks after dinner. Er and then all of a sudden I realized it was every day. And then one night I was alone at home and the next morning, one night I was alone at home. I don't remember most of the night, but the next morning I woke up and saw in the recycling 
a whiskey bottle and had wow. absolutely no memory of polishing off that bottle. And that's when I thought, this is only going to get really bad. You know, and there's probably, you know, a million stories of like my near death experiences, you know, where you where I tripped and I didn't break my neck. I mean, things like this. I always feel like the unit. First of all, I just want to say to my angels and my guides that protect me and kept me alive and didn't give me a spinal cord injury or any of the stuff that could have happened or that I didn't murder anybody driving under the influence, because I will say, I will confess, I drove under the influence. I mean, I was everything that you don't want to be. Um, a lush. And so it was ugly. And I, uh, that was the, that was for me, I thought this is only going to get, this is going to be bad. So I just decided at that moment when I was looking at the whiskey bottle upside down in my recycling, I'm good. I'm tapping out. So I did, but I knew for me that I had to go somewhere for a month and just sit with myself. And I found out as I was, um, in Whistler, I found out that most of my compulsion to drink came from anxiety, social anxiety. Wow. Yeah. And I did. Because you're quite shy, that. actually. I didn't know you're quite shy socially. Not only am I so, well, here's the thing. I just realized that when I walked into a party, I would get liquid courage and I counted on it. And then liquid courage would, would be like, I once had dinner. I, I, I once had dinner with um, John Kennedy Jr., the cute one. I have no memory of that, but I have a friend who remembers everything. And I'm thinking, it's so sad to have dinner with somebody as cute as that and not really remember it. <laughs> wow. I mean, it wasn't like anything bad happened or that I wasn't, you know, well behaved, but it was sad that I, I have a friend who tells me about it and I'm like, I wish I had been there. And he cost Elaine Bennis the contest, right? <laughs> she was thinking about JFK Jr. and then she had to rub one out. Oh my God. Is this on Seinfeld? Yes. Oh yeah. Sorry. I, I thought you oh, might God. know. Yeah. 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 No. I'm yeah, not. Yeah, a, yeah. Sorry. I, I never watched every single, but yeah. So those kind of things. So it was, it's been eight years and I will, I appreciate hello Sunday morning. You can still go to that site. I just think it's important, you know, all behaviors. I'm reading a book right now called atomic habits. Hmm. Have you heard of it? No. Well, it's an interesting book and I, I recommend it to your listener, to your viewers and your listeners. The guy that wrote it had a cataclysmic accident. He was a, uh, an athlete in high school and he had a really bad accident. And instead of, you know, doing what most people do when they have really bad accidents, which is, you know, they can devolve into oxycodone and then die. And, you know, it just turns out bad because he was a star, but instead he just changed his be behavior one at atom at a time. And the next thing you know, he completely turned his life around and made an amazing recovery and became a star athlete. But he ended up writing a book about it because he discovered that when we need to make really big changes, you don't have to do a quantum shift. You do an atomic shift, a little, and it becomes a habit. And that little adjustment will compound. And so I think that that's important for people to know. You don't have to do big swings. You just have to be consistent. Well, congrats on the eight years and Thank uh, you. good for you. And I recently heard uh, an episode of Senior Bitches with Jan Arden and Mary yeah. Jo Eustis. And Jan, oh, yeah, yeah. so yeah. Jan's not sure. By the way, this episode bumped our very own Mary Jo Eustis into the top 30 on Apple Podcasts. Like, Congratulations, like, Mary. It was such a huge episode uh, for you, MJ. Yeah, yeah, it was like, no, it was the top 20. Was no, What does that mean? There. What does that mean, you guys? Does that we mean- We were, and I even think top 10, I, I texted you. It means that we got into the, like, you know, the they only chart the top 200. I was, I actually beat this one over here, Toronto Mike. Uh, so we got into the top of the charts and I got oh, into the States, Mexico, that. Australia- all over the world, Jan, which is really great. Which was amazing. It's but really Jan, great. Jan and you were, of course, I'm, I listened to it twice because I heard it in real time and then I re-listened to it after the edits and everything. And then I uh, heard Jan was talking about her sobriety, like she quit drinking. And then MJ revealed that she was taking a break. Give us an update on that, MJ. Like, why did you take a break? Are you still on the break? What is the plans with your uh, alcohol consumption? With my alcohol consumption? <laughs> I'm still on the break. I'm still on the break. And to Ray Dawn's point, I didn't forget dinner as glamorous with, you know, our Robert Kennedy, hey, uh, sorry, John Kennedy Jr. John Robert, John, that's the I have, 
He, I mean, he was a hot piece, but they both were. But I do, for, I don't remember things. And I don't, re I don't remember parts of evenings and it inhibited behavior that maybe I wouldn't have done if I wasn't drinking. Plus, you know, ordering online late at night and then stuff coming and going, what the hell is this? Like, <laughs> and, and plus bad headaches, I wasn't feeling good and it wasn't doing anything for me. It wasn't serving me. And I thought, I don't want to do this anymore. I really don't want to do it was looking way too forward to my uh, evening cocktail. And, and it did change my behavior for sure. And so I thought I'm just going to go cold turkey. And now that I've started, I have like, I'm going to my mother's 87th birthday on Thursday and I'm not going to drink because I want to remember every conversation. Mm -hmm. And to your point, I was forgetting things that were happening and I am a lightweight and I, I actually read chemically that can happen. It just hits you. The alcohol hits you in a different way and you, don't remember. So I could maybe go years. I mean, I do love the idea of being in Rome or somewhere and having a glass of wine. I love that yeah. idea, Why but I have no desire to drink at this Oh, moment. by the way, Mary Jo, I saw a house that's for sale for like 230 uh, euros. It's near Umbria and it's really oh, okay. rustic and it needs to be redone. There's okay. buildings on it. And I think it's um, an acre. And it's got Should water. Should I pick it up and we can do I'm Christmas gonna, there I'm next gonna year? I'm going to send it to you because I thought of you and I okay. thought, oh, I'd almost want to ship Let's my... buy it together, the three of us. Like, I want to yeah. be Let's... co owner of this house of you two. I Let's know. do it. This I is know. my dream. I'm going to buy something in Italy. And we, we talked even about last Christmas uh, going to Italy for Christmas. Mm -hmm. So I definitely want to do that. That's okay, a well, dream. We all love Bucket it. Just, let me shout out authentic Italian food you can get right here in the greater Ooh. Toronto area. Okay. I, I wish you to. That. Now, I've never met Ray Dong Chong in the flesh. Like, she won't come to Toronto, even though <laughs> Precious Chong lives here. Oh, before I forget, I'm going to come back to Palma Pasta. But did you, Ray Dong Chong, <laughs> hear Precious, Precious, uh, it's hard to say Precious Chong. Pre Precious Pre Chong. Yeah. Did you, did you hear her on Toronto Mike? She made a, her yeah. debut. She's an FOTM. Yeah. A debut. Yes. She it made her debut on Toronto yeah. Mike. A yeah, debut. she was good. Her debut. <laughs> I did Precious Chong's show. She'd been trying mm -hmm. to get me to do it for years. Oh, and Story I did and it. Chong. Is that what it's Story and Chong? Or did I get the wrong show? Uh, uh, it was another show yeah. she was doing on Being a Mom. Okay. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was adorable. She okay. Was so all this is to yeah, say uh, Precious got a large lasagna from Palma Pasta because she came here into my basement studio. <laughs> One day, if I, if either of you ever make your way down here, uh, I will reward you with delicious Italian food from Palma Pasta. I like oh. that. But I like that like sponsorship. Here because neither of you are drinking, so no Great Lakes for you. I'm I'm there this weekend, Biatch. I'll head on you know, down totally. to the Can West I Island. tell you something? Can I tell you something? I will tell you one moment that I feel where I'll get a little pang for a drink is when I look, when I go to a nice swanky restaurant and I look at their whiskey backlit, mm, the gold, I'll have gold a moment nut, right. of like, and I'll just have a moment of like, right. oh yeah, oh right. yeah. Because yeah. I was a red wine whiskey girl. Weird combo, but. I'm white wine gin. No <laughs> vodka because it makes me crazy. Crazy. Yeah. But white wine and gin for sure. For sure, for sure. So much love to Palma Pasta. Much love to Great Lakes Brewery. Much love to Ridley Funeral Home, pillars of this community since 1921. Raymond James Canada has a fantastic podcast called the Advantaged Investor Podcast. In fact, I was recording with them downtown at King & Young Street here in Toronto when I got a WhatsApp call from Mary Jo Eustace asking me, have you seen people.com today? That was the question. <laughs> I was standing beside Chris Cooksey when I got it and I was like I gotta bike home now but what's going on and there you go and Chris Cooksey likes to remind me that he was in the room when I got the call that I was referenced in the tabloids oh, oh my god congratulations yes yeah, so I you? know that was his cherry yeah exactly <laughs> exactly so, subscribe I want to ask yeah. you something Mike anything please really quickly about um your yeah. Justin Trudeau Yes. Why is everyone guy. why is everyone picking up uh, uh, picking on him about his gifts from a billionaire? I don't understand oh, no, why it's that. It's not is. everyone. Like, Has he so, met Clarence Thomas, by the way? Well, in uh, I'm talking to you from Toronto, Ontario, Canada, and in the, it is the as you know because you're both Canadian. It's the largest city in the country. Here, uh -huh. you know, 
all our seats go to the uh, Liberal Party uh, federally. Okay. All our seats go to the Liberal Party or NDP. Like none of the seats go to uh, the Conservative Party of Canada. Trudeau, this is coming from elsewhere in this country where they've decided we've had enough of Trudeau. It's time to try something more Trumpian like Pierre Polyev. Like that's inevitable. That's going to happen. But it won't be because of Toronto, Ontario, Canada. We will not give a single seat to Pierre Polyev's Conservative Party of Canada. Right, right. Where will it's it come from? It East Coast? No, oh. wet, no, it'll come from the oil, right? West Coast? Well, lots of Ontario will do it, just not not Toronto. So a lot of Ontario, especially as you get to the 705 and stuff, like that's going to go conservative. Uh, a lot of the West will go conservative. Uh, not too much in Quebec, maybe some in the Maritimes. But yeah, I suspect the Conservative Party will get a majority next election. But whenever that happens... Well, in I, the hope next years, I hope not. I hope not. I well, hope not. And Mary Jo, are vote. you a Chiefs fan? Uh, going to excuse me. I look at how she asked. I've been a Chiefs fan for four years. I actually won a bet when the Chiefs played the 49ers in 2020, and I was dating this super hot guy. And I won, and we went to Pebble Beach, no, Pelican Hill for the weekend because I won. The Chiefs won. I love the Chiefs. I've loved, I listened to the Chiefs. Kelsey Brothers podcast. I've listened to it for as long as they've had it. I adore it. And so you must I, be really I love happy. Travis. Patrick Mahomes is my guy. Watch the series quarterback. Honestly, Patrick Mahomes is my mentor. I is love that him. how you I say it? Chiefs. Mahomes or Mahomes? Mahomes. It was oh, us will go. He's our Mahomey. Like people in the know know that. That's what you say about Patrick. Um, so and I'm is he a mixy? He looks mixy. Yeah, his mom's white, his dad's um, black, and he's tremendous. He could have been a baseball star athletically mm -hmm. he's absolutely incredible yeah, he's his incredible mindset he's so scrappy i could talk mm -hmm. about his lateral throws and his eye hand coordination but i won't but um they're playing <laughs> the 49ers and i love the 49ers it's going to be a great game too bad about detroit but you know what detroit and the buffalo bills this is what i said to my brothers i said my brother i said the 49ers and the chiefs are closers yeah. Never count them out. If they have a minute on yeah. the field, they're going to make it happen. They're so going to yeah, make it happen. I'm, now I'm it's thrilled. in Vegas. It's in Vegas. I Super know. Bowl. God, what it's if somebody so close. invited me? I'd walk to Vegas to watch. That I game. actually have a connection in Vegas. I have his name is Jay Sean, and he is my brother, and he owns Vegas. He is oh, a. He's a superstar, and he's. Can we go in the rig? Can we drive in the rig and go? Will you come we, with me? We will talk about it because, first of all, I don't even care about football, and it would be a yeah, waste of we'll a Super Bowl fun. ticket. But we'll I might fun. be able to. I'm gonna. I'm after the show. We'll talk. I'll give you a hot dog. I'll buy the hot dogs. No beer, but, but we'll have we hot the dogs. Rig? The only time I've ever heard her say that. Let's uh, go in the rig. Oh my god, I'd love it. Seriously, I'm obsessed. Yes, I'm very excited. They're in the Super Bowl. I'm sure that the way. tickets are super um, expensive because it's Vegas, and everybody wants to go to Vegas for some reason. Yeah, but me, but you have to know if we. I mean, if I knew somebody and I could get a ticket, I'd drive. Oh, my, I'm I mean, telling you, Jay dream. Sean, right now his phone's ringing off the hook. But what he okay. does is he is the literally the mayor of Vegas. He is. He is, and he. would have fun. We'd go. We'd have fun. Look, look there's so Jay much Sean going on. Is my stepbrother. He's my mom's. Okay second husband's son okay work on it and even if you don't love football I'll explain how it I goes don't have some hot dogs have and to popcorn. Say I'm not a foot I'm a tennis girl Mike I help really me out tell her, I tell her how fun to be. like because I know people who don't like football but maybe you can get into the event of it all like this isn't a, all these eyeballs on the but, uh, if I could get Mary Jo in and get her a ticket yeah. and set her up because she knows how I roll I'm very generous Right. So Very I'm generous. gonna find out if there is any way. I mean, there is a limit. <laughs> Mary Jo actually has money right now. So I'm thinking I might Mary be able jo? to work this. My out. accountant wants to know. Do you have money right now? I do. I do. Send those old invoices. Do you like how I pay the second we're done now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the, we got some talking to do after this. That's amazing. Hey, I okay. have a note. So I have like a Google Doc that I, it's like a living, breathing organism. I'm always taking notes on like potential guests and questions I have for them. Okay. And okay. I realized last time you were on, Mary Jo, I had a question for you that we ran out of time and I never got to it. And I'm glad sure. Ray Don Chong is here because I'm going to play a song and then I kind of need the story about this. Are you ready to listen to a little music with me? Sure. Okay. Yeah. Imagine you said no, I'd say. Well, oh, no. Oh, God, no. I'm so scared that he's going to play.
Okay, this song is called Loose Change. Radon, do you know uh, who's singing this song? The irreplaceable Mary Jo Eustace. <laughs> okay, Mary Jo. Mary jo oh, this. wow. Wow, I what a blast from the past. Wow. How old wow, are you? Wow, where did you okay. find that? We need all the details because I feel like we talk about so much about the the show you had of Ken Caustic, and then you had the, the, the that was the uh, cooking show, and then you had the show on Proud FM. Bob Willett's a good friend. He comes over every month. We say, hey, Bob, Mary Jo Eustace, and we smile, we laugh. Uh, we love it. We love it all. We talk about the tabloid bullshit, and we talk about how you have senior bitches, and we never talk about this. Please tell us about your recording career. Recording. That is so sweet of you. Um, I had a record. I got a record deal. Uh, I was old for it. I think in my early thirties, but I had been doing it for ten years, and uh, it was my second record deal, and I loved it. And I played with great musicians. Um, Bill Bell, who plays with Tom Cochran and was Jason Mraz's musical director. I actually had um, Mike Taylor in my band who who was in Walk Walk of, Walk Off the Earth. You know that band? They're great. Burlington. He passed away. He passed away in his sleep. Um, and Andy Koyama, my boyfriend at the time, but I was having an affair with a guitarist, never a good idea, is an Oscar-nominated um, sound mixer. So, yeah. I just yeah, you that's sounded so good. You found you that. sounded really really good. That was one of my soft ones. I used to do the rock and roll and belting and stuff. But she yeah, good. yeah, you can hear oh, her. Thank voice you. Too. So did you thank want you. to? Be, I loved it. Did you want to be like a I don't know like a Jan Arden? Like was that the goal? Yeah, I wanted to be. I wanted to do music, and we finally got a great manager. The guy who managed Blue Rodeo. And I think Jake Gold was involved and they put us on the road. And I remember this one night we'd been playing for a long time. And finally, in the fifth or sixth song, I'm like, wow, we're getting good. I didn't know you had to do that. Like we just went everywhere and played everywhere. And then we got really good and got the deal and, you know, whatever. But it was it was a moment. I loved I loved it. Loved it. Did you like the road, though? Did you like being on the road? I didn't love that. Yeah. Wasn't loving that. You know, I was the only the girl, rig. but. Yeah, we needed the rig, but we actually got better. And I was like, this is how you have to do it to be really good. And uh, way, it was a great ride. You're great dropping ride. names there, like Jake Gold, right? Yeah. Like all Canadian. Yeah, Jake, Jake, Gold, Jake Gold. And I was in um, a blue, this is so funny. I was in a blue rodeo video. I loved blue rodeo, Jim Cuddy. And who's the other guy, Greg? Greg? Greg Keeler. Who's the other Great killer. So, Radon, I get in this video. I tell everybody I'm in the video. I'm so excited. So I play a sexy cleaning lady at a motel and I go in and, you know, there's shots of my legs and this short dress. And I'm like, in every scene, I tell everybody it comes out. It's my feet in the back of my head. Okay. What and the then song? what song is this from? What song is this video from? Oh God, I have to look it up. I can't remember what it is. And I ran into the guys and I went right up to them. And I'm like, what's going on? And they were like, oh, we didn't edit it. But I was, I thought it was going to be so famous being in the Blue Rodeo video. But we That's opened okay. for them a few times and stuff. And it was tons of hey, fun. I had a woman over here recently, Michelle McAdory. Do you know this name? Yeah. Yeah. Crash Vegas. Crash Vegas. I, and that was what her boyfriend at the time was Greg Keeler. Greg and Keeler. Yeah. She's in, she's in a couple of, she's in try and a couple of blue rodeo videos. I know she got the lead. Not me. <laughs> By the way, just to change the subject for a second, have you guys been seeing the Sofia Vergaro show Griselda? No. Is it oh, good? On Netflix. I never like really violent television shows. It's not my jam, yeah. but Sofia Vergara is playing a Colombian drug dealer and it's really good. It's called Griselda oh, okay. and it's on Netflix. You will like it. Sorry. I just had to say that because it was like, no, my mom told me about it. I... My nephew had a birthday last weekend and I saw her and my mom was telling me about this. Uh, yeah. So Sophia good. Vergara show. Okay. And, right. and I, I check it out. And as I was listening to you talk about being, um, showing your feet, I was thinking, you know, women speaking of empowerment, this show about this drug dealer, it's not just about the coke and the violence and the whole thing. It's actually about power and about how this Colombian woman rises to be the godmother of Miami and then the world of coke. And it's fascinating. And so Bia Vigaro okay. is doing a great job. Yay, girl. Go. Hot I'm going to tune in. I got a few more things oh. to get through, like the real Housewives of Salt Lake City, and then I'm going to check it out. <laughs> you, watch, you watch that with your son, right? 
Oh yeah, he turned me on to it and I couldn't even believe it. Like I the Salt Lake started, City and, girls. Oh my god, there's one woman who like married her grandfather, uh, one's going to jail, one beat her up. They go on girl trips and all they do is yell and scream at each other and dress up like in <laughs> costumes. It's bizarre, but I cannot stop. stop and watching. the Mormon church is in the background. Wow. It's I, it's so dumb. But I love it. Why did but you back, go ahead? Go ahead, Ardis. No, I was just gonna say back to Mary Jo. Mary Jo's a rock star. Well, Mary Jo, why did it? I could have been. Why did it? Been. Why does it come to an end? Yeah. Musical dreams. My musical dreams. Oh, do you remember a band called Frozen Ghost? Or Arnie Lanny. Lanny. Arnie. Yeah, I know him well. Yeah, yeah. He Barley wanted me. He. Yeah, he produced us, and then he wanted me to leave the band and go solo. Talk about like, and I wouldn't do it. Um, so I worked with Arnie, and I would just go up and write and record. Yeah. Um, you know what happened? I got notes. From lot singing live. Oh yeah. And um, then I had surgery and it changed my voice. Oh, and yeah. uh, then I came back, but I did the record after my voice changed. But my voice was so pure before that. But I um, fascinating. I pushed I it. it. Oh, I didn't yeah. know. That. So your voice, you had this pure voice, and then you had these nodes from singing, and then whatever procedure they do changed your voice, and you couldn't yeah. get that note, I guess, or you couldn't uh, sing with that purity. Not the same. Here's you the have deal. to relearn. It's, you have to relearn how. And um, once I did relearn and I started because I started training for it and, you know, getting back into it. And again, it's like the 10,000 hours you've got to keep doing it. And then I was I got to my old level, but it was like singing every day and being on top of it. Now I can barely sing. I mean, I I can if I work on it, but I I knew my voice back then. How, I got it back, but it took a year. But your like the record company it. came to me. The record company came to me and said, we want to sign you. And I'm like, I remember going for lunch with this guy and going, I just had, sur you know, anyway, so I worked it back and it was an accomplishment. It was something I wanted to do. And I've written like hundreds of songs with super, super cool people. Um, so yeah, I just, uh, that was my dream. That's what I wanted to do. I loved it. Because Ray Dawn could introduce you to Mick Jagger. <laughs> Apparently. No, he doesn't talk to me anymore. <laughs> He stopped talking to me when I did uh, press about how it was gross to be licked by him on film. I said I didn't really like it, and that was the end of us. Um, well, they licked by I'm him gonna... in uh, in the bedroom, but uh, no. Okay. Right. Oh, well, that that's personal. Too. But um, on film, he licks my face, and I remember being sort of offended that why would he do that? It wasn't even like a thing. But um, my dog is making noise. But I was going to say, um, Mary Jo, your friend Mary. Maria Maria McKee. Maria McKee would tell yeah. you the life of a rock star, even if you're super successful, is really hard. Oh yeah, I mean, she she couldn't do it. She couldn't do it. You know, Maria McKee I, for Justice. She opened for you too. Like she's brilliant. Think, you know, she it's couldn't a do really it. Really tough life, and I don't think it's fun. And I think you get on the road and you're super lonely. It's one thing to be a guy doing that, and it's already really hard on you. But being a, a female, it's so. I think it sucks. Yeah, I did love it. And if I ever got my act together again, I would start to write again because I loved songwriting. But yeah, that's so funny you found out. That was such a significant part of my life. And well, it was pure joy I loved doing it. Mary Jo, because who, I, I was who very- Who tipped you off? I'm who about to you? name the name that tipped me Mick off. Mick Jagger? <laughs> <laughs> you guys fuck off. No. I know, seriously. I also look like a young Moroccan boy, so he's kind of into me, I think. But okay, so uh, this is years ago when we first started working together, Mary Jo. I got a note from a listener who's lis listening right now, Blair Packham from The Jitters. Oh, oh yes. cool. And Blair's- Do you know Blair? Yes. Oh, you know, so tell us how you know Blair Packham since he's listening to us right now. Blair Packham was, did he, this is so funny. Are you going to edit this? We could talk for days. I'm not going to. Um, Blair, we probably have to get I believe. Nine I believe he rapper. played. I believe he played with Mo in the pursuit of happiness. Mo but I could be wrong. Mo Berg. Mo Berg. I think he also played with one of my really good friends, Melanie Doan. Okay, when you say played with, you mean like shared a stage for a one-off? Yeah. That what's it? What was his band? The Jitters. Okay. Like, okay. Uh, um, I've been a fool. Played it dumb. Should have played it. Like my head, but not my heart. Must have been. I've met him. It. You've met him. I've met him. I definitely know his name. And I think he's played like the, all, all those Canadians. Like we did, like I wrote with Sarah Harmer. Like we all went on. Well, name um, doing trying to find out if the, the, So this is like a songwriter circle or something where this is what was described to me by Blair. Like 
you write yes, together yes. in some circle. Yeah. It was really, it was a really cool thing. So they took all the Canadian musicians and there was big musicians in it. Like I, uh, Sarah Harmer, he was in it. Um, Mo Berg might've been in it. Like, and then they would just pair you up randomly with somebody right. to write a song, right. which I thought was a great idea. And then you'd have two weeks to do it. And actually on that album, mm -hmm. CD, I don't even know what you call them anymore. I wrote it. I co-wrote a song called Hurricane, which is one of my favorite songs that came out of that songwriting workshop. It was an amazing thing. Amazing people, amazing with? artists. Who did you write it with? Bob Dylan? Who did you write that with? It was Bob. Right. It was Bob. Di <laughs> Bob Dylan was there. Um, Van Morrison, Springsteen. You no, know, seriously though, was that a Blair like Packham that. production? Was that you and Blair, or was that somebody else? You wrote Hurricane. It was a woman, and I can't remember her name. It was, it was Jan Arden. It was Joni Mitchell. Joni Mitchell. It was Joni Mitchell. It was Joni Mitchell. But Joni Mitchell's uh, gonna play at the Grammy. I know. First I know. No, she's gonna play at the Bowl. Not I the just read that on on on. Uh, she's she's coming in. I think October twenty fourth. Um, she's gonna be playing wow. live at the Bowl. Let's Love that. Tickets. Love it. Yeah, well, I'm going to see her on the Grammys it. because it's cheaper for me to just watch her on the TV. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. wait on a couple. So again, we'll talk for a couple more minutes here because I want to make sure you have an opportunity to ask me all the questions you have about my my health and my blood clotting and all that exciting mm -hmm. stuff. But Ray, well, did you did you see did you have a near death experience? No, I don't think so because I didn't get the stroke. Like I was in the stroke oh. sleeping with the stroke victims because I, I a stroke was imminent, but the stroke oh. obviously not imminent because I never did stroke out. So I had. But the, you were close. Well, I had a close. blood yeah. clot on my brain, which if you don't get it in time, it leads to a stroke, and that's why mm. I was in the stroke unit or whatever. But I went on blood thinners, and I never did get the stroke. So and the blood clot's gone now. So I just have a, a long story short if that's possible. Now, I have a disorder that causes my blood to clot, but they don't know what it is because they don't have a test for it because I test negative for everything they have a test for. So really, like literally on Thursday, I get a CAT scan on another part of my colon, my tract or whatever, because really at this point, they're just trying to make sure it's not cancer, which uh, because that's something that causes blood clots. But I don't have, uh, I've not tested positive for anything that they have a test for. So right now I just take blood. I wonder if you're allergic to something. I don't know. I came out of nowhere in March 2023. So this is, I've been living with this for less than a year. So I don't know. It just, you know. I, I wonder don't... if you're allergic to something. I wonder if it's environmental even. Do you know about the industry in your neighborhood? <laughs> so these are the big questions. Uh, I don't know. I don't, like, I don't know. I have a hematologist and I, ha I had a neurologist for the brain, but I have a hematologist for the blood clotting. And I just kind of leave it in their capable hands and then we kind of, you know, but I don't know. I always wonder though, sometimes what happens is people don't realize that sometimes an industry moves into a neighborhood and they have effulgent, they have, they dump at night. And if it's a toxic substance, it can impact you because you're sleeping at night, unaware that you're breathing in something that could crea create a DNA, an adjustment into your system. And I don't know where you live, but it happens often and it's unregulated because a lot of times people don't, obviously, they don't follow regulation. So you should find out what's in your neighborhood. Something might have moved in, try, you know, at 2003, that causes your body to respond because it sounds like a, an allergic reaction. Okay. But I, yes, yeah, so 2023 is when I got my first blood. Yeah. Okay. I, excuse me. 20, 2023. I call yeah, him so my little blood clotting friend. That's what I call I him. I know, but you should find out like if, well, I don't know where you guys live. Well, I'm very like, so Ray Don Chong, I'm so uh, hyper aware of everything going on in the hood here. Like I'm on my bike exploring mm -hmm. every nook and cranny. And uh, you know, there is a new, a new coffee shop opened and I'm going to keep my eye on where they're dumping those coffee grounds, but uh, I'm going <laughs> to. You're so <laughs> funny. Exactly. But you know something, I went for, I was driving from a racetrack because my ex-husband was a race car uh, aficionado and he had designed this race car. Anyway, we were driving um, home and we were in Massachusetts, northern Massachusetts, and there was a smell and it was really bad. And sure enough, I looked it up and it was this toxic, it was actually a paper mill and it was dumping stuff at night. And no, and it, like really bad stuff and people are sleeping. So there's cancers and stuff that come from these, you know, so when they say they think it's a cancer, I'm just thinking it might, you might be suffering from something like that. Well, let's hope I'm not, let's hope it's uh, who knows what it is, but uh, I'll let you know as soon as I get some kind of a diagnosis and what causes these blood clots. But I want to read a note for you, Radon Chong from Buffalo boy, Buffalo boy is a good listener. He can, comes to our events and Buffalo boy said, 
My favorite Ray Don Chong movie. This is going to shock you to hear that it's Commando when she fired the rocket launcher at the police. <laughs> she does that yeah. every day that I know her. She's right. so busy I, I doing that. Rocket launchers. And what does he want to know? Or he's just, yeah, he just wants, I don't know. He just, uh, I went on Twitter and said you were coming on and then he, he wanted to let us know. So that he well, I'm glad that my it. bazooka work was, got him inspired. You want to hear five seconds? Hey, Mary Jo, do you want me to play five seconds of Ray Don Chong uh, on In Commando with a guy named Arnold Schwarzenegger? You want to hear it? I think I do. Yes. I've never even seen it. I want to hear it. Let me hear it. Let's play these five seconds. Are you all right? I think I'm dead. You're all right. Wait for me. That was it. They don't, you know, that was it. So I pulled a little clip there. I think I'm dead. All I do is squeal in this movie. What are you doing? God, you sounded super sexy. I'm going to well, watch Mary it Joe, never... after Real Housewives yeah. of Salt Lake City. I was going to say, you become very good friends of Ray Don Chong, and you don't think about, you know, watching her biggest, the biggest movie she's ever been in. I always forget I... I'm in movies until I don't. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, I mean, I know I should watch Commando and uh, no. Quest for Fire. No. I want to. I want Quest to. Quest for Fire, I'm actually proud of. Yeah, of I mean, Commando, can we watch I, it I together like and I can get commentary? Let's watch it together. No, you know what I like to do? I will tell, I have this thing. I should probably do it for like one of those uh, mystery house theaters the, with the puppets. What is that called? You know, those guys, uh, the puppets? Science 3000. Yeah, I like that show. And um, I like to watch my super Here. bad, horrible movies and right. then make fun of me. And I can tell you what I'm thinking in the scenes. Like I did that with a film oh. called The Borrower, which is just unwatchably bad. And I'm trying to get out of the movie while I'm making the movie. I would watch Commando with you, like just a box where you in real time give us like commentary on everything. I would do that. Okay, before we say goodbye to everybody, I've already told the world they should subscribe to Senior Bitches. It's a great podcast from Mary Jo Eustace. Thank but you. just a final check in here. Ray Don Chong, like, how are you doing? Uh, what's going on in your world? Is there anything we should look forward to seeing from you uh, in the near future? What would you like to say to everybody? I don't think I have anything other than I have, I'm on all the platforms. I'm auditioning for stuff. I just found out I didn't get one of my jobs that I auditioned for, which was I actually don't care. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, you'd want to do a good job, but then when they don't go with you, it's usually with, it's a, it's a saying rejection is protection and you don't want to be in a job that they don't want you. So there you go. Um, I'm not doing anything. I'm actually just playing a lot of tennis, taking care of my animals. Um, taking is that care a euphemism? Of my, huh? Taking care of your animals was that a? Euphemism? I have two pit bulls <laughs> no, that she... I take care of. I literally have animals. Okay. And I'm crazy about my dog, so I'm learning how to be a good dog mommy. Um, taking care of my boyfriend, who's a musician, and he's making a record. Yeah, I'm just I'm actually enjoying not 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 doing. I have nothing on the horizon, and I'm enjoying that. I'm just finishing oh. a book or two, trying to kind of do that, get more disciplined about writing every day, and it's trying to write a book that's interesting that I would read, not a book for people. Like in other words, I'm not writing for the chance I'm writing for myself and it's taking a long time. Hey, what kind of music does your boyfriend make? Like what genre? Like folk? So or? Mitchell is a master guitarist and he specializes in uh, world music. He speaks fluent uh, Portuguese and he's a jazz, but he he plays Shurlo and, and Brazilian samba and he's bossa nova. I mean, he's a really good musician <sighs> and he's gotten better. His his singing, oh, you're everything's his muse, just so good. Right? You're his, hmm? you're his muse? I'm definitely his muse and he he writes songs for me. I mean, he's annoying. I think musician boyfriends <laughs> suck, but I do love him, which is amazing. And I will say being in relationship, especially now we're in our seventh year, is hard. I think it's really hard. And um, so I mostly love him, but a lot of times I hate his guts. <laughs> okay, and he knows I've this. Heard. He's standing right on the other side. I've heard. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's listening but, to me. Yeah. But uh, but I respect it, and I respect being, yeah. So here I am, a human being. I'm trying to be a better human being. Hey, well, you I'm look doing. great. You sound great, and I love following you on the social media. And I love that I consider you a a, a wonderful FOTM. And this won't be the last time we talk. But I appreciate you coming back I'm on. Definitely, I'm definitely an FOTM. And you're definitely coming back. And I don't know why you won't visit Precious. I, none of my business. But at some point, you should come to Toronto, and then we can like embrace. Yes, we will. We will definitely um, over lasagna. You'll embrace. Right. We will right. share a meal and giggle. Oh my god, that sounds amazing! And Mary Jo, you're coming to Toronto like tomorrow. When are you coming here? I'm coming Thursday. 
Okay, what time? So I don't know. Maybe co maybe coffee. Like maybe coffee. If you're all right, I'm gonna let you guys fall in love. I love okay. you so much. I'm gonna take hey, Ray Don, okay. you. Bye, bye, Ray Don Chong. Bye, Lee. honey. Bye, bye, Canada. Bye. Bye. I love bye, you. bye, 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 bye. Mary Jo, bye. you and I are gonna close the show. This is the way the the okay. good intended here. Uh, so you're coming to Toronto because okay. your mom's turning eighty seven. She's turning 87. I'm coming to Toronto. So if you're on your bike, maybe we can do a little coffee I'm, or something. I'm always on my bike. If you're, okay, perfect. I'd be happy perfect. to come. And then, I think, and then I think we might have a really gas, a, a big gas we're doing on Sunday. I'm really, yeah, I'm just trying to day. finalize that. Yeah, T, I'm excited about that. Anything? Is there anything that's locked in? I know that we have some recordings coming up, but is it too premature to name these people? Or do you want to like just get people excited about what's coming down the senior bitch's pipe? Well, we have a show we're going to drop Wednesday or Thursday with Caroline Bodino, who is a huge, um, I don't even want to say influencer. I don't love that, but she's got a million followers. She is changing the way women think about themselves in dress. And she was just pure joy. And we're going to do Patty Stanger from the Millionaire Matchmaker next week. So I'm excited about that. And I'm just going to get confirmation on Captain Jason from Below Deck. He's in Dubai. So we're trying to schedule that. So we have so many cool people coming up. So we love this. We're very excited. Very. And I love having you on Toronto Mike. I want to thank the great uh, Bob Willette for introducing us with no, no hey, Bob, Bob, no MJ on Toronto Mike, right? Correct. Absolutely correct. Bob Willett, who used to eat a hot dog at six in the morning, barf, when he produced my radio show. We love you, Bob. Hot dog? Bob. Or even, you have to make it yourself, right? You don't. There's no vendor oh. selling you hot dogs at six in the morning. It's so gross. He dropped it on the control board. I can't talk about it. I'm still traumatized. <laughs> and that brings us to the end of our 1,420th show. You can follow me on Twitter and Blue Sky. I'm at Toronto Mike. The place to follow Mary Jo, I've learned, is Instagram. Follow Mary Jo Eustace on Instagram. It's really the only social media she posts to. And it sounds like Ray Don, Don Chong is everywhere. So follow her wherever you like to follow people on social media. Much love to all who made this episode possible. That's Great Lakes Brewery. That's Palma Pasta. That's RecycleMyElectronics.ca. That's Raymond James Canada, and that's Ridley Funeral Home. Checking my calendar. See you all. When am I going to see you all? Oh, see you all Friday when my special guest in person is Morgan Campbell. That should be very cool. See you all then. And your smile is fine, and it's just like mine. What's up, Blue Rodeo? MJ? Uh-oh. <laughs>